Rheumatoid arthritis is a autoimmune inflammatory arthritis that if it's not treated, it can slowly destroy the joints of the shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingers, knees, ankles, and feet. Medication and anti-inflammatory diet are the most important methods to stop the disease and avoid joint destruction. Exercises are used in conjunction with medications to preserve the function of the joints, to avoid disability, to improve morning stiffness, and to reduce pain. So today, I will show you nine exercises that people with rheumatoid arthritis need to do every day, maybe for the rest of their lives. Once they learn this routine, they can do anywhere, anytime, and it doesn't take more than 15 minutes. In the beginning, when you are learning, you may get confused and you may take half an hour, but with practice, you will master this technique and avoid a lot of problems down the road. So let's talk about exercises for hand rheumatoid arthritis today. For these exercises, you will need a little bit of equipment, a soft ball, a sponge, an elastic band, resistant bands. The hand is affected in almost all patients with rheumatoid arthritis, and it's also a major cause of limitation for daily activities. Therefore, I'll focus today on exercises for the hands in this video. Many years ago, there were some physicians and therapists who believed that exercises led to more inflammation, more cartilage destruction, and more pain. We now know that this is not true. There are many randomized trials showing that exercises contribute to the maintenance of healthy joints, decrease pain, reduce stiffness and deformities. Medication and anti-inflammatory diet are the main treatments to stop rheumatoid arthritis, and exercise is the best method to avoid disability from rheumatoid arthritis and preserve the function of the hands. Remember, motion is lotion, and remember that many people with rheumatoid arthritis may develop osteoarthritis, or OA, so it is better to start exercising to prevent OA on the top of RA. What are the best types of exercises for rheumatoid arthritis? I reviewed a large randomized trial of exercises for rheumatoid arthritis, and I will demonstrate the best exercises here. Well, general exercises are highly recommended. These are not exercises focused on the hands. They are aerobics, cardio exercises, range of motion, walking, swimming, biking, and dancing. Watch my other video. Here, uh, I did a video demonstrating dance for people with arthritis. But before I continue, please remember that this video is for educational purposes only. And if you have rheumatoid arthritis, ask your physician or your therapist if you can do these exercises. And in case of emergency, go to the nearest emergency department or call an ambulance. If your hands are swollen, you may want to apply ice to reduce inflammation. If they are stiff, especially in the morning, you may want to apply heat or use a hot pack to warm the synovial liquid. If you have instability or hypermobility of the joints, these exercises may cause some dislocation and more pain. How do you know if you have instability or hypermobility? Well, first you should ask your doctor or your therapist if you have this or not. The joints will be moving beyond the normal range of motion and doing a lot of popping sounds and will be very painful when they move. So let's talk about specific hand exercises now. There are mainly two types of recommended exercises, mobility to preserve the range of motion and in strengthening. I will show you five mobility exercises and four exercises to strengthen the muscles. It is important to maintain the muscle strength because they will help to stabilize the joints and avoid deformity. I'm going to use this worksheet to take notes of the repetitions. I'll put a link to this document in the description of this video below. You can download it there. Let's start with mobility exercise, also called range of motion exercises. When you do these exercises, remember that motion is lotion. The more you move, the more your synovial membrane will produce synovial fluid, and synovial fluid is what lubricates the joint. Now, if these movements are aggravating or pain, please talk to your doctor or your therapist. You may need some help with pain medications or anti-rheumatic drugs. 
The first exercise is metacarpophalangian flexion, MCP flexion. These are the joints between the hand and the fingers. It's where the thumb meets the index finger. They're also known for the large knuckles. These joints do two movements, flexion and extension. We'll practice these movements now. Don't do anything with the thumb now. Keep the wrists aligned. Let's start with five repetitions and hold for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. And repeat five times. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So you repeat this as many times you can in the beginning. Take notes in your worksheet and also how many seconds you can do and try to increase the repetitions to 10. Once you can do 10 repetitions, then try to hold for 10 seconds. Number two is tendon gliding. The muscles that move our fingers are in the forearm. You may feel them here if you move your fingers. The tendon that connects to these muscles, these muscles to the bones here, they pass through some pulleys in the hand. So this exercise is to lubricate the pulleys and the joints. I have another video about trigger finger, which is thickening of the pulleys. It's very common and painful among people with rheumatoid arthritis. To avoid the formation of the calluses in the pulleys, we need to move slowly and regularly. You see, the fingers have phalanges. The thumb has two phalanges. The other fingers, they have three phalanges. They're called proximal phalanx, middle phalanx, and distal phalanx. And between the phalanges, we have the interphalangeal joints, the proximal joint and the distal joint. We call them PIP and DIP, proximal interphalangeal joint and distal interphalangeal joint. This is an excellent exercise to move all tendons that are attached to the phalanges. And we have tendons on the back of the fingers here that do the extension of the fingers or strengthening of the fingers. The tendons that are attached here, they move this, uh, do the extension, they are attached to the dorsum of the forearms. We also have tendons that do flexion of the fingers or bending, and these tendons are attached to muscles in front of the forearm. So I recommend starting with the hands up. This helps to reduce swelling of the hand. Keep the thumb quiet. We'll come to the thumb later. Let's start with all fingers straight. Try to strengthen them and don't move your wrist side to side. Keep your forearm, wrist and fingers aligned. If you can't do this with them up, then you may support on the table or on your lap. So the first position is one straight line. The second position is the hook. So bend the distal and middle phalanges. Keep the metacarpophalangeal joint straight. Hold for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. So now you bend the metacarpophalangeal joint. This is a full fist. Hold for five seconds. And the fourth position is the tabletop. And the fifth position is the full fist. Here you keep the distal phalangeal joint straight. So let's start with five repetitions, okay? And we're going to hold for five seconds. So we start with a straight line, one, two, three, four, five, the hook, one, two, three, four, five, the full fist, the tabletop, and the last one, the fifth position. One, two, three, four, five, and start all over again. Repeat five times. And take note on your worksheet how many repetitions and how many seconds you were able to hold. Then increase the repetitions until you can do 10 repetitions. Once you can do 10 repetitions, then increase to 10 seconds hold. Number three is finger abduction. In addition to bending and strengthening, in medical terms we say flexion and extension, the finger also do other movements. They open and close. This is really important because we do a lot of activities of pinching and holding things. The muscles that control this opening and closing 
are inside the hand, here in the metacarpal area. This movement of opening and closing we call abduction and adduction. Any movement that brings a body part close to the center is called adduction. So when I do this with my shoulder, this is adduction. Any movement that moves a body part away from the center is called abduction. So this movement of the shoulder is called shoulder abduction. So let's do finger abduction. Hold for five seconds. Now let's do finger adduction and hold for five seconds. And repeat this five times. As you progress, you can increase to 10 repetitions and then each time also hold for 10 seconds. So finger abduction, finger adduction, abduction, open, 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 very open, all of them, and close. Open, 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 stretch, 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 and close. Take note in your worksheet how many repetitions you can do the first time and try to increase them for the next time. Number four is finger radial walking. One of the common deformities that we see in hands of people with rheumatoid arthritis is called ulnar drift or ulnar deviation. The forearm has two bones, the ulna and the radius. Ulnar deviation means that the fingers will be bending towards the ulnar side. It happens because of how the arthritis affects the metacarpophalangian joints. This exercise is to prevent this deformity from happening. But if this deformity already has happened, then this exercise will not be effective to correct the deformity. In this case, the person may need surgical correction. So place your hand on a table or on your lap and start moving the fingers to the radial side. Start with five repetitions and as you become better at doing this, you may increase to six, seven, eight, nine, or 10 repetitions. Number five is wrist circumduction. The wrist is where the radius and ulna connect with the bones in the carpal area of your hand. There are many joints there. These joints are commonly affected in rheumatoid arthritis. So hold the forearm and start doing circular movements to the right, to the left. Start with five repetitions and as you become better doing this, you may increase to six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 repetitions. And take notes on your worksheet, how many repetitions you can do for each hand. So then you can see the progression of your exercises. This is your conduction. Try to do the whole range of motion of your wrist and you can do slow. This is important to lubricate the wrist joints. Now we'll do four exercises to strengthen the muscles. Eccentric wrist extension. I have a, a couple of rubber bands that I bought on the internet. Uh, they vary in resistance levels. This green one is extra light. Then you can start with this one, then progress to the, this is light, this is heavy. I think I'm missing the middle one. And this is extra heavy here. I'll put a link to this elastic loop bands in the description of the video below so you can purchase them. So what you do is you hold them with your fingers. So you're already strengthening the fingers and then you fix your elbows close to your body and move the wrist backwards. So you can do 10 repetitions, one set of 10 repetitions. And as you progress, you can increase to two sets of 10 repetitions and then three sets of 10 repetitions. So this you are strengthening the muscles of inside of your hand and also the wrist muscles. If you get tired, you can stop. You don't need to do all of them at once. The exercise seven is gross grip. Grab a soft ball, then squeeze it for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. And you can start with one set of 10 repetitions and then increase to two sets of 10 repetitions and then increase to three sets of 10 repetitions. You can also increase the amount of seconds that you hold the ball. You can carry the ball in your purse, in your car, uh, when you are in line waiting, so you can be doing this exercise anywhere. 
Exercise H is finger adduction. Get a clean sponge and place in the middle of your fingers and press the sponge for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. And then the other finger, one, two, three, four, five. The other one, one, two, three, four, five. You see it's not easy in the beginning and you do this for both hands and then you can start repeating the number of seconds that you hold up to 10 seconds and you can also repeat how many times you do this per day and take note in the worksheet so then you see your progression. Pinch grip. This last exercise will involve the thumb. Make sure that you don't have instability of the thumb. There are two important joints that move the thumb, the CMC and the MCP. This one here is the carpal metacarpal joint or CMC, and this one here is the metacarpal phalangian joint or the MCP. Ask your doctor or your therapist to tell you the situation of your CMC and MCP. If you have instability, then you may need to restrict the movements of these joints and wear some splints to avoid dislocation and more pain. If you don't have instability, then it is safe to do thumb exercises. This pinch grip exercise, you will need a soft ball or a sponge. Grab the ball between your thumb and alternate with the, each other finger, like the index finger, the middle finger, ring finger, and pinky finger. In medical terms, we call them the D2 or digit 2, digit 3, D4, and D5. So you press uh, and hold, you do this 10 repetitions, try to do these exercises daily, and uh, do it with the other hand. If you have pain, you can apply an anti-inflammatory, ask your doctor or your pharmacist first. So if you like this video, give a thumbs up here and subscribe to this channel and watch my next video here. Goodbye!